Good day. Welcome to my podcast. Without further ado, let's get right into the subject. Being a second year student of the Bachelor of Religious Studies, I have come across a variety of religions. In another course, Cosmology and Religion, the idea of creation rooted in a struggle between order and chaos, or in other words, chaos kampf, was put forward. In the course, this idea was mainly applied to the ancient Near Eastern world, especially in the Enuma Elish. Given that Judaism is culturally embedded in ancient Near Eastern traditions and religions, the idea of Chaoskampf could maybe also be applied to Judaism itself. This podcast shall therefore discuss the idea of Chaoskampf and if it can be applied to the creation story as described in the book of Genesis in the Hebrew Bible. Before we proceed any further, this podcast is mainly referencing and discussing ideas of the book Creation and Chaos, a reconsideration of Hermann Kunke's Chaoskampf hypothesis by Johann Skurlock and Richard H. Beale. Firstly, I would like to discuss the concept of Chaoskampf itself. What does it mean? Hermann Kunke was its original conceiver in the 19th century. He was an Assyriologist who recognized a battle in the ancient narratives like the Enuma Elish or Hesiod's Theogony, describing battles between chaos and order, or good and evil, which were often predating the creation as told in the narrative. What is more, the struggle seemed oftentimes to be the cause of the world as we know it. The hypothesis has since been heavily criticized since its conceiver didn't just analyze these narratives. Kunkel also implied that this seemed to be the origin myth of all religions in an esoteric sense, a sentiment which was widely spread amongst scholars in the 19th century. However, this criticism can't be extended to the concept of Chaoskampf as a tool of analysis by necessity. That would initially be an assumption. There are simply too many examples of this struggle in ancient narratives to disregard the concept completely because of the motives of a scholar from the 19th century. A few which spring to mind are described in Hesiod's Theogony, the Gigantomagia, or which doesn't necessarily relate to a creation of a world or cosmos in the literal sense, is the contention between Horus and Seth in the myth of Osiris. The question then remains, can we recognize the Chaoskampf in the book of Genesis in the Hebrew Bible? If we want to explore this possibility, a comparative approach would be suitable. Wilfred George Lambert explains in his short essay, Creation in the Bible and the Near East, that the creation stories of Genesis chapter 1 most certainly had been influenced by the Enuma Elish narrative from the ancient Babylonians. The idea of cosmic waters, which predate creation and are in a way its prerequisite, are a similarity which with almost complete certainty proves this influence. The question then that arises, in what other ways does this influence materialize itself in Genesis chapter 1? Has the struggle between Marduk and Tiamat and her eventual defeat, which culminates in the separation of heaven and earth by Marduk, also influenced Genesis chapter 1? This question Joanne Scurlock seeks to answer in her chapter Searching for Meaning in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, Purposeful Creation Out of Chaos Without Kampf. In this chapter, she provides a thorough analysis of Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, which I will now read out to you. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. This is the King James Version of the Bible. She focuses particularly on the meaning of the ancient Hebrew word ruach, which usually is translated as wind, breath or spirit, as is demonstrated in the passage. In the Targum translations, ruach is interpreted as a wind blowing from before God, which could possibly be interpreted as the wind from God, which blew the cosmic waters into shape or into order. As Skurlock puts it, This could be uh, interpreted as God battling the sea, which would parallel Marduk battling Tiamat. God would then, whilst not being explicitly described in Genesis chapter 1, create the universe out of this struggle, a chaos kampf. However, Skurlock argues that this interpretation cannot be understood as the authority when it comes to interpretation. Several interpretations have been made over the past millennia, which included a Christian view on Ruach, which drew an analogy of the creation story being a sort of recreation or rebirth, which ties into the Christian idea of baptism. Ruach in this context meant the Holy Spirit. 
But next to these interpretations, Skrullock argues, is that the meaning of Ruach in the Genesis context should probably be understood as something which is connected to a bird-like activity. Quote-unquote. As Ruach is also accounted for in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 11, As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her uh, wings. This is again King James Version of the Bible. To understand Ruach in its own historical context means making a comparison with other sources as well. In this case, the Enuma Elish narrative is again a useful source. Skurlock points to several words, the Akkadian Hiatu, Ugaritic Recheb, and finally the Syriac Recheb, which all seem to point towards a purposeful cognizant activity or movement. The best way to connect this to a bird-like activity is to translate Ruach as surveying. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 should therefore translate to with darkness over the face of the abyss and the spirit of God surveying over the uh, face of the waters. Joanne Skurlock has thus demonstrated in this article that a connection between the Enuma Elish and the creation story of Genesis is even more considerable. However, this would mean that the idea of a chaos kampf, where God would create the universe out of a struggle, would have to be rejected. There is simply no proof that the chaos kampf, even though it features in so many other narratives and myths, can be, uh, can be applied to the ancient Hebrew narratives as told in the book of Genesis. The question that comes to mind is then, were the people that constructed the narrative of Genesis aware of other narratives like the Enuma Elish? And is there an argument to be made that this could have influenced certain choices to omit certain motives, like the idea of a Kaoskampf, from the creation narrative in a polemical sense? This question is sadly beyond the scope of this podcast. And on this note, it is time to end this monologue. I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for listening.